Our guest host this morning is legendary value investor Mario Gabelli of Gamco Investors. And Mario, it's great to have you here today. Good to be here. And Joe, it's only temporary. <laughs> yeah. he, he knows he's sitting in Joe's seat. And, and by the way, Joe, if you're watching, he's touching all of your things <laughs> yes. right now. Um, uh, Mario, I want to talk about, uh, I, I know you're a bottoms up guy. We're going to talk about QE in just a minute and talk about some of the top down things. Sure. But why don't we start off just how you're feeling right now in terms of where the markets stand, real light volume, but we've seen things that have been pushed higher and higher. Uh, what do you think about where M&A stands right now? What do you think about the overall market? Well, it's a good starting point. Uh, the QE2, like the Queen Elizabeth II, they're putting every, all the passengers on board and all the provisions. And the question is whether Bernanke will set sail. And I'm not in a camp that believes he will at the moment. But as you pointed out, Carl, it's the details in the language that everybody will focus on with their sharp red ink pencils. Uh, within the markets, in the last six weeks, we've overcome a large amount of wall of worry. The Googles, the concern over Google, the stock was up yesterday. Goldman Sachs has done better since FinReg is out of the way and there are minor issues. But I think the market is going to start looking towards the election in which the deficit, jobs and the deficit are important dynamics. How do we create jobs? How do we get a fiscal stimulus? It's not going to happen. So therefore, as you look into the first half of 2011, the market's going to start saying, wait, what happens to earnings? And there's that lull and that pause, and it doesn't refresh this time. It's a little more volatile than I would expect. And so we, the market does not have a margin of safety in it overall. But as we get towards the end of the year, after the election, as we start looking into 2012 or the second half of 2011, I think you're going to start seeing some renewed confidence in a lot of sectors, particularly in the, re the notion of regulation. How is government going to implement the details if the swing in the uh, makeup of the House and the Senate can change. Uh, that is going to be an important bo confidence booster for uh, corporate America. Does that mean things are on hold right now, or can you look around and still... Well, you still, uh, well now you go back to the second part, M&A. Uh, yesterday you had a couple of deals announced. Uh, they're not big ones, but it was an interesting one. Neighbors, for example, Gene Eisenberg got on and bought a company in the pressure pumping business, which is kind of unexpected. Small deal. Like 30 million shares, they're offering $22, nice premium. Stock was up 3 or $4 yesterday. But that's an example of corporations that have very good confidence, a cash flow, and want to grow and reposition themselves globally. And that's what's going on. At the same time, you have KKR deciding that it's going to pull its share offering. Well, except for one thing. KKR is public. We own it. We bought it. We like what Henry Kravis is doing in his team. And uh, we think uh, that that's a, another pause that refreshes and a good opportunity to buy shares. But is that a situation where they look around and they look at the market and they say this just isn't the best time? Well, I don't know ex all of the dynamics. That's what they paid lip service to. What really is going on internally, it's not clear. But what is clear, that is private equity has a role, that reallocation of capital, they can raise the money, they can deploy it, and all of private equity is a, a source of deal activity because either they invest it or they lose it. And so as a result of that, without my skepticism, it would, obviously I'll give it to you, mm -hmm. That, you know, you'll see the more activity, and you've seen more activity in private equity. But the real trigger is the corporate world. They are flush with liquidity. They're getting better. The interest rates have come down. They're liquefying the balance sheet, lengthening the maturities. And then they want to grow. What and why and when are some of the issues? Do you think it's more likely that corporations will do something like that, where they jump back into deals rather than hire people, rather than buy back shares? Well, it's a they have a lot of cash. It's an alloc well, the cash initially, as I mentioned earlier and other times, not today, but they're putting money into the pensions where they have defined benefits, mm -hmm. shifting the defined contributions, trying to get ahead of that curve, particularly with interest rates coming down, which increases the liability portion of the balance okay. uh, of the pension cost. How do they get out of that? I think they get out of it in 2011. They can see that there's only five months away, and so confident the cash flows are good. Hiring, confidence, clarity on regulation, stop corporate bashing. And now uh, that we're in that political phase of the year, I, I don't think that'll happen again. How much do you think it's worth to the market if the Republicans take the House? I think the market goes down. Goes down? If Over the next 90 days, if the belief is that there's no second round of fiscal stimulus, because why would the Republicans take the House? Jobs and the notion that the public is tired of this shifting of resources to the 
public sector and saying, hey, the deficit's too large. How are we going to get out of this mess? How do we prepare for the, our grandchildren, our children? And that is an important element. I, we'll see. Today we have a primary in Connecticut as an example of what's going on. But you, but you said that you think corporations so, the will actually start. Yeah, but I was going to say, you said corporations feel better if they have confidence that there's clarity. less uncertainty. That well, clarity, clarity. clarity is always important, particularly with issues like tax, with uh, policy, with initiatives, with how government is going to review the dynamics in the world. And what is important in that is stop bashing those that create jobs and create wealth. And I think that's that but element But you still will think add. the market will go down if the Republicans take the House? Between now and the election, the belief is that there will be a shift. There always is in this midterm election in the first year of a president, even when the pe president has good popularity. And when popularity is evident, the question is how many. Mm -hmm. And so from my point of view, I don't think the, Rep I think the voters are saying throw everybody out. <laughs> There's such a dissatisfaction, and it reminds me of you know the state and local governments Wherever you look, it reminds me of the rotten boroughs in England about 150 years ago, and they have to restructure the entire uh, inefficiency of that sector. Mm -hmm. Tammany Hall, that kind of thing. Well, no comment on Tammany <laughs> Hall, but you um, know that Tammany Hall around the world, around the country, and uh, just getting to the efficiency yeah. of how we do things. You know, uh, what's the job differential between working in the private sector, all in, fringes, retirement pay? Uh, versus the public sector, and where do we get efficiency in government? How much is the market pivoting around the possibility that tax cuts are extended? Uh, that is an element in the cost of capital and the allocation of capital. Our ideal world is obviously to raise taxes, raise taxes on those making over a certain sum. But you can't take a threshold of X dollars for those that live in New York and those that live in Des Moines, Iowa, now, because we have another guest coming on from there. But you have to look at it and say, what's right? And how do we allocate that capital, and how do we reduce the deficit? I think that's becoming a priority, and we all have to contribute to that in a way. But on the other side, if I'm making 25000 I'm not paying any taxes. Right. But I'm paying my Social Security tax, and that is an, another drag on, you know, a 6.2% on 25000 is 1500 It's $125 a month. You know, that's a pretty nasty hit that we can help maybe suspend that for a while. And then we need it to lower the corporate tax rate to make us competitive globally right. by raising taxes for certain individuals and then obviously eliminating abuses, Carl. Uh, the hedge fund, why should they to be treated as capital gain as opposed to W-2 or even some of the others like private equity and you're going to get a lot of fan mail on I, this. I was going to so say, keep talking. Yeah, I, know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, you should be back. <laughs> Joe's going to roll over that you're sitting in his yep. chair. But we're going to continue this talk on the markets. Mario is going to be with us as our guest host for the rest of the program.